Good evening, YouTube. This is your man, Mario Joyce Pay. Coming to you live, live on YouTube. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, today. It's a special day, Christmas. Spending time with your family and loved ones, and to give blessings and to and to really to remember the good times of the holidays. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, I just got back home a few minutes ago, and I was just looking on my computer. I saw this was posted on a uh, uh, WMAA MA um, rankings that um, former UFC and UFC fighter and Invicta champion um, Sarah Kaufman is no longer signed with the PFL and she wants to return to Bantamweight division by 2021. Now, <clears throat> you know Sarah, she's been around for quite some time. She's been uh, MMA for at least about 14 years. She started her career um, with one of the, with, uh, she started her career, she was around Strike Force. Um, you know, and then um, when Strike Force floated, then she was with UFC. And after she got let go of UFC, she went to Invicta, and she became the Invicta 135 champion. And then after a time, she left, um, you know, Invicta. You know, after winning the championship back in, uh, I think, 2018, she, uh, oh, is it, is it, she, um, she left and went to PFL for a time. Now. Sarah has a history, as you know. Uh, she faced certain um, MMA fighters such as uh, Ronda Rousey back in Strike Force days, and also she faced Valentina Bulashchenko early in her career. You know, and, you know, and that was a uh, one of the Bullets' first fights. Well, where the fights the first known fight, you know, there was a fight where she fought Liz Kamuch, you know, but uh, this is the one that was her first televised fight against Sarah Kaufman. And you know, Kaufman also faced fighters such as Roxanne Malaferi, Liz Carmouche, Alexis Davis. Um, the list will go on, you know, and she has the uh, record of 21 5 and 1 with a no contest with Jessica I. Now, back in um, 2019, you know, you, she, um, after 2018, she was the Invicta um, Bantamweight champion. And then she left Invicta to go to PFL. And to fight in the uh, PFL lightweight tournament, where she lost to uh, Luisa Pacheco, I think around in the um, semifinals. So her record in um, PFL was one and one. So you know he was fighting as a lightweight. So this is so the thing is where is she gonna go? You know, as you know, I you know she's I don't know if Dana White would pick her up or not. You know, I don't think her and Dana White came off in a with a uh, mm, you know good part of good ways and she wants to fight as a 135er now you know she can always go back to Invicta you know and that's a possibility being she's a former champion there or she can possibly maybe uh hook up with um Scott Coker and then Scott Coker can really start working on the 135 division she can probably fight at 145 if she's looking for a fight you know they need some you know but you know, if you know Scott Coker should go ahead and start doing one thirty five division. He's, you know, he has he has he probably has the best flyweight and and featherweight division out of both you know uh, Victor and um and the UFC. But he lack he lacks at least you know about ooh, two others. You know, there is a strongweight division, but it's not as strong, and he doesn't have a bantamweight division where you know he needs to work on. But if she ever does go back to um, UFC. There's always a possibility maybe if she climbs up the ladder and, you know, and may face uh, Amanda Nunez. Years ago, her Nunez supposed to fault, I think, back in Strike Force. No, 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 not Strike Force. If I'm correct, they supposed to fault back in um, early early time in Victor. But the fight was canceled for some reason. I don't know if it was injury or something. Um, if anybody knows what reason why, I put it in the description. So, like I said, you know, this is a... Uh, you know, this is probably some big news. I think, um, you know, it's just, you know, like I said, she's like, you know, with the return of, like, think about it. Also, you, you know, I did a video where you get a return of Misha Tate. You know, Cupcake Hate Tate's coming back. And maybe, you know, knowing Data White, you know, maybe he'd make him, you know, you know, Misha, um, you know, like I said, uh, Sarah beat Misha in the back in Strike Force. And possibly, you know, Data White might offer them both for a, a position, especially, um, Misha Tate, but uh, it just it's up in the air about her um what she's gonna do too. Like I said, is like I said, there's only only a handful of organizations that probably have a good bantamweight division of the outside of the UFC, 
and you know and Evicta. But like I said, uh, like I said, Bellator should need to, they need to really work with a uh, uh, create a bantamweight division. I mean, there's a lot of fighters who are maybe mm, too small for 140, 145 or you know too big for one twenty five, and one thirty five is perfect for them. And you know, and that'd be perfect. You know, division to develop over there in Bellator if they. And you got somebody like here, like Sel Kaufman, who's a natural 135-er. She can start it. You can recruit some more. And I mean, there's a lot of fighters that probably want to jump over to Bellator because, you know, it's hard to get onto Victor. I mean, to get onto the UFC. So, like I said, I, I'm just going to wish uh, her the best of luck. And, you know, maybe if she don't, maybe if um, Dana White see fit, he might bring her back. And maybe her and me should take your face off. You should be on my Rage George page. Like, don't like, don't subscribe. I'm out.